From In the Beginning to the Musical Apocalypse, this is The Bible Says What. I'm your host, Mike Wise, and I get things wrong. I overreact and get frustrated. I can lose my shit. I am human. Sometimes the defense of the undefendable can set me off. I strive to be a patient person. I struggle with it constantly. I don't know if it's the pressures of life squeezing every ounce of patience I have left or the responses given by some of my guests. But sometimes I feel, like Patrick Bateman, that my mask of sanity is slipping. I know in the past and in the future, I have and will allow my guests to say some things without me rebutting every comment or claim. But when it comes to the assertion of a loving and protector deity, I find myself becoming more and more agitated with the responses I receive. I can only take so much before I lose my shit. And on this episode, I lose my shit. Let's start the show. Is there anything in the Bible that you yourself have an issue with? <laughs> okay, so it took you reading the Bible to realize that those things were bad for you? Yeah, it actually did. I, I didn't you figure I, this out on your own? No, Ted, Ted Bundy could be redeemed. God doesn't kill children. That, what, what do you think the Passover was? Yahweh sets up a whole system in the Old Testament where you slaughter animals just so he's able to forgive you. Today's special guest is returning guest, author and YouTuber Lewis Ungit. Welcome to the show. Back to the show. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Yeah, glad to be back. Glad to have you How back, you doing, man. Mike? Thanks for coming back for number two. Not many make it this far. Uh, so we kind of left off. I wanted to get, wanted to touch on free will a little bit. Um, yeah. So, but before we start free will, I, I, I think I forgot to ask you in the last episode, um, if you could just describe your deity to me so we can get a basis of, you know, where you're coming from. Yeah, we did talk about that a little bit, but I mean, my I believe in the God of the Bible, so I believe he's best described um, as we see him in the Bible. Um, so a personal God that is all-knowing, all-powerful, um, his personality um, is most clearly seen in Jesus Christ, um, huh. one that is um, uh, kind of uh, compassionate, um, caring, and yet uh, not, not uh, sacrificing goodness or justice um, for, for any of that. So um, kind of uh, most beautifully seen in, in the personal work of Jesus Christ. Interesting. Not so, oh man, there's so much there. Holy cow. We could do five shows. <laughs> uh, he doesn't sacrifice goodness. Is that what you said? Yeah. So, I mean, sometimes we picture uh, when someone's nice um, that they kind of, um, are then indifferent to um, the um, sins and, and the wrongdoings of others. And um, God somehow is both wonderful and nice and um, compassionate, but also um, he is uh, able to um, remain holy and, and not um, take pleasure in, in our wrongdoings. So wow you keep going we just keep having episodes added on here he, he he's infinite he's infinite <laughs> oh, when no, you talk about no, it no, here we go <laughs> <laughs> oh man i'm running out of room here infinite <laughs> holy cow all right thank you that that's more than enough i appreciate that um yeah, good. now now that we have this good infinite doesn't sacrifice wonderful and nice um deity let's let's uh let's talk about free will do we have it do you think we have it? Um, yeah, that's an interesting um, debate within Christianity. Um, you'll see um, people on the reform side of things like Jonathan Edwards um, that, uh, and, and actually Martin Luther was a little mm. bit this way too, um, that kind of do not believe in free will, believe in a strong predestination for a strong sovereignty. Then you'll see other people like C.S. Lewis and um, 
John Wesley, um, that are strong believers in free will. Um, my personal view is that um, mm -hmm. I, I am a um, believer in the sovereignty of God, but at the same time, I do believe that we have free will. I don't think it's a either or, I think it's a both and. And, and so I do believe that we um, do have free will. Now I'll say okay. um, free, free will is often kind of painted as this picture of like, you're in a perfect um, place where you can see all your options and you make one particular decision based on weighing those things. And I think in reality, often we come to every situation and every issue with um, our own conditions, our own emotions, our own upbringing, our own uh, culture, et cetera. And we make decisions very much based on that. The example I always give is um, with the consumption of food. Um, I'm, I've spent a lot of time in China and um, I love American Chinese food, but when I go to China, I don't, you know, I don't like it that much. And um, I, on the other hand, I've got friends that come from China here and they don't like our food very much. And it's not that we're genetically different. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, Americans raised in China are fine and Chinese people raised in America are fine. It's that mm -hmm. we have these cultural things that shape, kind of shape our, our tastes for food. So you could ask the question, do we have free will in what we eat? In one sense, yeah, absolutely. I can eat anything I want. In another sense, you know, based on where I was born, how oh, yeah. I was raised, how my mother cooked, that kind of thing, I don't have free will. So it it's, can get a little complicated. It's not just this absolute, you can eat whatever you want. It's it's more, um, you know, how, there's, there's so many factors that go into how we decide what we decide um, that, that goes beyond some kind of abstract free will. I think we need to define free will first. So what is free will to you? Um, so when I say I believe in free will, it means that I don't think that either God or nature um, forces you to think a particular way, do a particular thing. Huh. Um, I think that you are um, uh, in every situation, you um, actually do have some capability of making a decision, which, which way to do um, huh. now. Um, so I, I do believe in free will in that sense. Like I said, it's, it's, it doesn't mean free as in unencumbered by influence. Um, and often those influences are very heavy, but. It, it, you said it doesn't? No, I, I, I think the influences around us absolutely have a strong impact on the behavior and actions and thoughts that we have. Um, I think undeniably, um, we think uh, in line with the culture and, and, genetics that we have and the world that we have around us so, I, I think that's undeniable so i would i would define it as the ability to make your own choice uh uninhibited by an outside influence and it, it, honestly it's, it's it's a difficult discussion um do we have free will do we not i mean there's, there's a mcdonald's mm -hmm. advertising every 10 seconds do you really have free will not to eat mcdonald's for lunch mm -hmm. because it's it's there. It's it's not really your choice. McDonald's made that choice for you by flushing the advertising at you. You know right, what I mean? Right. What yeah, is yeah. free will? Uh, exactly. you, you stated right. it as Yahweh does not force you to think a certain way or do a certain thing. Now, do you think that's true? Because we're going to go to Bible verses that that mm -hmm. contradict that thought. Um. Yeah, I believe that we actually do have. Um. I don't. I. I All of us. I, yeah, I don't think that God forces us to do evil or forces us to do good. Um, huh. But with that being said, I mean, like, I, I think that it's a complicated issue in that I think God certainly influences it and certainly um, oh, influences like yeah, McDonald's without, advertising. Without, yeah, exactly. I mean, every the, the idea that we any of us huh. have have perfect free will, we're free of influence on any subject, I would challenge you to like name one because i don't think donald's any, i'm not free from that influence man it's it's it, fucking yeah, it's everywhere every, <laughs> everything we do is influenced the, the way we think is actually influenced by our language um by the stories we were told as a kid i yeah. mean like we are uh, we're we're never perfectly free we're very much tied to other human beings i would argue tied to god but so where does not, that influence um, from yahweh come from if if, if it's all societal and, and the way you're brought up and whatnot how is yahweh influencing us in any way <laughs> Yeah, well, I, th I think that he absolutely um, works in our heart as through the Holy Spirit. I think he absolutely out works in our life through um, through circumstance. How do you know, and, and how do you know this is Yahweh? Just... McDonald's, I know, because it's there. 
Yahweh's not. How do you know it's Yahweh doing this? How do you know it's yeah. not your circumstances, your situations, your, your society, your mother? I mean, how do you know? Mm-hmm. You're yeah. talking about oh, an my... invisible thing, you know, as opposed to a tangible, real items, such as McDonald's and mothers and things like that. Not brought to you by McDonald's, that... by the way. I think I've said it 10 times now. <laughs> I would say that all influences that we have um are are all experiences that we have in in a sense are invisible right like how do you know Mm, when when, you had the experience though they're okay go ahead sorry well yeah but let me yeah so when i when i say that stove was hot um that's a invisible sensation that's going through my hand from my from my nerves it's real though you can end my brain it's a real pain though it's not invisible it's it's real you have nerve endings we know how all that works well, we can see the and you chemistry can, behind it. Yeah, exactly. You know, hold, hold on. We can see the chemistry behind it. You can't prove how you feel, right? Like you feel that feeling is an unprovable thing, right? You have to trust my testimony that it hurt. And there's some people without pain. No, for example, I've, I've felt to, to, burns you know, for example, before. For example, Tony Dungy's kid, um, the famous football coach, oh. his kid had a weird condition where you couldn't feel pain. So like it was a big problem for him in that he you know would put his hand on a stove and not feel the pain and and get burnt really bad um and the only way we know his kid had a problem and i don't have a problem is because of my stated experience right no because your pain receptors i mean not experience this is pain you know what pain is and he would know that a hot stove is bad because there's cartoons that tell you a hot stove is bad don't touch hold on yeah we we didn't know from doing scans of his hand to look at the nerves as far as i know the nerves were fine it was some kind of disconnect somewhere else but okay so the, we can actually the, find but, this disconnect right we can actually well, look uh, into it and we know i don't i don't know that we can i mean it, it's possible that we can but i don't know of that course we know we can. that's physical. how we know it's there right no they know it's there because he can literally put his hand on a hot stove no, but and like not get it burnt, what right? exactly but, what exactly has happened we know it's there what is exactly happening because we've researched right. it and we can find out how it works and how or why it doesn't work i mean well it's not- i i think you're i think you're incorrect there but even if you were let's take one yeah. that's less less object or less less tied to that yeah i i say i'm in love i love my wife i love my kids i love my dog how how that's a feeling you have to trust. But these are real my... people, dude. Right. Well, yeah, You're but adding on, real things to yeah. invisible but things. But what I'm you saying is that's ex- real to invisible. Yeah. yeah, but what I'm saying is that experience is something that I know is true. So I know love exists. Great. Love is Only a feeling. Because... Next. <laughs> right. But it's a. Fe- it's a so is, is it, Jesus you... just a feeling? Yeah, but are you saying love is not a real thing? I'm telling you, love is a feeling. It's a feeling. It's a it's a chemical reaction. Is it a chemical are, reaction? So I I don't I, know that. Yeah, I'm I not a goddamn love, scientist. Yeah, I'm telling yeah. you that these are real things, though. Love is a real yeah. thing. It's a feeling I, on real people, on real things. It, it's, it's a yeah. it's a so it's a so reaction. If you can, so if you can feel love and know that love is real, <clears> so like I I think we can document that people love each other. Or like we know that's, that's what we true. call those right. those feelings. Yes, we call right. those feelings love. Go ahead. So, Right. So that's a feeling that's invisible. Nobody can see. You have to trust my word. It's not a person, dude. Right. right. It's it's something that's it's not a person. It's a feeling and it's an emotion. We know emotions and Jesus. Are you telling me emotions and Jesus are the same person? Not at all. What okay? Just go run with me here. So I'm trying. I'm I'm trying. (laughs) You you said everything we know exists, we have to be able to observe. I'm saying you can observe. I'm never saying that you you can feel love and know it's there. What if you can, and I believe you can, feel God and know he's there? What if How God do you is, know it's uh, God? Have you um, talked to this man and said, and, and, and scientifically or, or, or objectively or proven this? I mean, how, how does that work? It's an invisible person. How do you know that invisible thing is giving you that yeah. feeling? That is the yeah, weirdest I, thing. I don't think it's that weird. You know, I think um, it, it, there's almost every feeling we have of objective things. So feeling of sadness, feeling of, um, feeling, feeling of a hot stove, feeling of, um, all come from person. physical things, actual tangible uh, items, things that we know exist. When you go to God, 
that's completely different. You're telling my my invisible man sent me feelings. Well, what the hell? How so do you C. even C. know? Oh, well, well, so Martians are sending yeah, me hold signals. On. All right. So C.S. Lewis talks about this. Martians so, so let, are sending let, me signal, yeah. signals, Joe. Lewis. Yeah. Let, let, yeah. <laughs> let me uh, let <laughs> Prove me give me you wrong. some. But yeah, they're invisible. Give, they're on Mars. Let me give you C.S. Lewis's argument on this. I love C.S. Lewis. I, Let's I think do it's it. compelling. So, I don't, um, but go ahead. He said, if 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 you live in a circumstance where um, people are hungry for food, uh-huh. we can guess we can guess that food exists, right? If, we know food exists because I eat it. All right, I let, just had let me finish the argument. Like, just give me thirty <laughs> seconds. Here. All right, food. So, so uh, the feeling of hunger is met by. I should have brought some beer. As yeah, well. oh, hey, the, brought the, to you by Voodoo Ranger. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, the feeling of hunger um, points to the existence of food, right? The feeling of love points to the existence of the possible of love. The po- feeling of sexual desire points to the existence of sex. The feeling of um, divine no interaction Lost me. points to something, <clears throat> right? So, like, you get no. giant percentages of the population nope. that feel this interaction with something that feel this desire for something nope. that feel this um love for something and atheists are stuck in this position of saying all nope. these people that all state the same expression same feeling same emotion same thing all those people are mistaken wrong confused weird like it's it seems is it seems like the 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 burden of proof should be on the person that says they're all wrong. <laughs> they're all wrong about their experiences. Like all these people the burden of proof wrong. is on you, they, man. You know, How do you know yeah, they haven't seen Muhammad? How do you know they haven't what? seen the Virgin yeah. Mary? How do you know they haven't yeah, seen but, Bigfoot? Aliens. Right. Holy cow, right. the burden of proof is on you. Prove to me that Bigfoot is not real. But if we prove were, to me, yeah, Bigfoot we just walked all... in my bedroom. I can feel it. He sent me a feeling. If prove humanity went, let's let's say you know, <laughs> Elon Musk. Come on, Lewis. Let's say Elon Musk shoots us three people to three different planets. There's no other human beings. Well, that sounds around. like fun. And they all state, and the rest of humanity dies out. Somehow they're able to regenerate themselves or keep themselves alive. Wow, and this is really then, going science fiction here. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then, like, a, somehow far into the future, someone uh-huh. says, I'm lonely. And the other, somehow that message gets over to somebody else and they're like, what's lonely? I don't believe you're lonely. There's no other people. I'm the only person. Like, the loneliness points to something, right? The loneliness, even if you don't know what that other thing is, that it points to something. And I feel like everyone's experiencing this thing where I say like, okay, I pray and I feel something. I feel an interaction with God. I feel his feel goosebumps, messages, man. not just goosebumps, man. It's just like, you feel- Is he touching it, you? It's, hard to ex- it's very hard where to Where did he touch you, Lewis? Um, you, you feel- um, <laughs> you, you know, you feel, and as a matter of fact, in, in my case, like you feel answers to the prayer, right? So like you no. pray for something specific and the examples I give are like, you'll pray, you'll realize that you're $101 short on rent this month. Oh. And as you're praying, $101 check shows up. That Meanwhile, the kid like down at the cancer that. ward, whose past parents are pastors, the whole community is praying for the kid to survive. He suffers for, I don't know, two years and then dies. But you got your money. Yeah. So, but you found your right, car keys. So the, <laughs> but your your kid slept right, so, well at night. You know he answers right, those so the, prayers, but he doesn't answer well, like other right, ones. So the it doesn't the make idea any sense, that, Lewis. Um, the idea that because God does not answer every prayer immediately in the exactly the way you ask does not Period. mean that you can't significantly notice the the remarkable specified answers to prayers that so many Christians report. Wow. I mean, like, like what about Christians the prayers will, to Buddha? Like, what about the prayers to Muhammad? What about all those other prayers that, that get answered by mm-hmm. other deities? What about Joe Pesci, George Carlin prayed to Joe Pesci. Guess what? 50, 50 Joe Pesci, God, you know, yeah. I heard that. No, I, well, I, I have like, you're counting the what, hits. Was, I've heard yeah. this. You're, you're counting those hits the ones that work, but you're missing the ones that don't work. And you're finding it really poor excuses for the ones that don't work. The kid dying and suffering of cancer whose pastors or parents are past. I can't get that one. Parents are pastors praying for him and he doesn't survive. He still suffers, but he gave you money. You're counting that money, hit, but you're missing the part where the kid has to suffer. Why? So God can turn people to Jesus. So no, I, that well, first of all, let I don't, me, I don't say there's, understand there's, those kinds of situations. Let's not confuse the existence of evil in the world and the fact that I can't just pray of like God take away all evil in the world tomorrow. Um, like why not? 
Why would um, he not? Why would God not want to take evil away from the world? Why would this wonderful and nice, all powerful, all loving, all knowing God not well, want to take away evil, Lewis? Well, you've read the Bible, right? So, like, the Bible waiting. does have it. He, he's he waiting in evil away. Like, I'm going to no wait question, evil. centuries, yeah. let everybody suffer. I'm just going to hold on. I'm going to let Satan have his time. He's going to do his thing. I know you're suffering right now. Oh, man, I know it sucks. It's really cool up here on the cloud. You'll get here. You'll get here. Just, you just, just wait. Just wait. God, it's dumb. Why is he waiting, so if you All right. I, on Why would point, he release like, so, evil on the world? Free right. will? So That's do you scary. think um, <laughs> do you think a good parent um, would Ooh, um, don't, ever? Don't. Do you ever think a good, good do you think a good parent would ever have a reason don't. to permit their kid to go through something oh, for that sake dude that's a hundred percent different that's a hundred percent different if i let my kid touch the stove no just to teach him a lesson oh no i'm gonna tell him what it's about, hot okay what about i'm gonna going make sure he doesn't a... do it if he fucking reaches for it i'm gonna stop him i'm gonna what stop about, him about... from making that bad choice i'm gonna intervene as is... a loving all right. caring Hold parent on. all right let me finish my, my go ahead then. go all ahead right. I agree. Stove, take their kid. Do not let your kid go through. Yahweh that. doesn't. He says, go ahead and touch the stove. Let me teach Hold you on. a lesson. Let me finish my point. Go ahead. All right. Stove. Go. You, you stop him from doing it. Yes. Chemotherapy. Chemotherapy. What? Chemotherapy what? Chemotherapy. What about Do it? Do you allow your kid to suffer in chemotherapy? Why would God allow anyone to suffer in chemotherapy when he has the power to take it away? Well, hold on. Hold on. Stop. As a parent, would you oh, allow your kid sake. to suffer in chemotherapy? Why or why not? I would. I would in a second. You, you so have no you? correlation there. Nothing. Yeah, but Yahweh, answer the question. Stop, would you Lewis. allow? Stop, Lewis. You cannot even remotely compare the two. Yahweh allows I can, the and rape. I'm going to. Yeah. Yah, Yahweh allows the rape of children in his own house and doesn't stop it. You would stop okay. it. Hold I on. would stop it. So, so don't give me the, some little little weird analogy that doesn't even remotely compare to the uh, the the, the, the okay. massive amount of, of, of horrible I, things he I, allows to happen. Okay, first of all, chemotherapy I sucks. That, yes, I they believe will suffer that. through I, chemotherapy, yeah. but in the end, they will be you know fixed of it supposedly, and it's not always a hundred percent. They will so, suffer through so, that. Yes, so, of course. So you're, but they will. So I will not allow rape. Right. I will not allow them to be burned. I will allow, not allow them to be tortured. That's what hold, sets hold me then. apart, let, Lewis. All right, all Go right. Ahead. So let me let me. Sorry. Think. So, in principle, you just agreed hmm. that you would allow suffering of someone you loved if it had a good purpose. Oh, for shit's sake, Lewis! Right? What is what you good just, purpose did, is there for children to be raped in his own church? What good okay, purpose so, is there? What so good purpose is there for children oh, to suffer of cancer, oh, Lewis? What all right. Good so purpose? let me take this. Uh, let me take this analogy further. Let me take this analogy. I wish that. you wouldn't. But so, go ahead. So, so rewind <laughs> five hundred years. You're you you are a parent five hundred years ago, and you you meet up with this guy from the future, and he's a doctor from the future, and he starts what looks like to you torturing your kid, and it seems like the worst possible thing that he could do. You get a bunch of guys together and you murder that doctor from the future. And that doctor was trying to give that kid chemotherapy to save that kid's life. But you didn't understand with your small little 500 year old brain, you didn't understand what chemotherapy is. You didn't understand what he was doing. You didn't, it just looked like he was torturing that kid to you. And so what I believe about God and what I believe um, when we look at the evil in the world, I say the same thing. I say, I don't understand. I'm like a guy 500 years ago looking at chemotherapy. I don't understand why God allows suffering. I don't understand why he allows me to go through that. I've been through horrible things in my life. I don't know why he lets other people go through the horrible things they've gone through. I don't know why he lets kids get hurt and kids get damaged. I don't know any of that. But I do know that as a whole, this entire world that we have is as much wrong and evil as there is. Somehow or another, like chemotherapy, God is going to take that and somehow fix it and bring it back to better than it could have possibly been before. He's going to remove something like, and I would say sin is something like cancer in our world, in our society. And like chemotherapy, it requires something that is very unpleasant to go through. And this world around us has a lot of unpleasantness. But what I do believe is that God is like this perfect doctor 
that can take the most unpleasant situations that we're going through and somehow reverse that. So when I talk to a kid that has suffered from sexual or physical abuse, or I talk to a, um, a mother that has lost a child to cancer, or I look at you know someone that has gone through a horrible experience in their life, I can say to them, and I can say it with 100% honesty in my heart, I can say, you're suffering. I'm sorry for it. I'm going to try and stop it as best I can, but your suffering ultimately will be reversed. Wow. That, that somehow God can take even the worst of all suffering and he can turn it around and make it better. And First Thessalonians 5.18, give thanks in all circumstances for this is Yahweh's will for you. Be thankful you got raped in church. Be thankful Yahweh allowed it to happen. He'll turn it around. He'll make it good for you. So just to clarify, are you telling kids that got raped that there's no, they, they, wow. they should just view that as wow. um, a situation that there, there's no redemption. They can never, in no way can they look at, back over their life and, and grow as a human being. There's no way, there's no way. So like, why would I he allow suffer, this to happen, Lewis? Why would Yahweh allow it to happen in his own home? Because he thinks, um, no, no, we're going to give a short answer here, Lewis. He, why would he allow it to happen in his home? Is it because things will get better and they will change and be a better person because of it, Lewis? Is that what you're saying? Um, uh, the, no, that's not what I'm saying. Okay, then I, let's, I, let's, I, let's make a right, short let me, answer. You, you yeah. asked me what I'm saying. Okay, I want so, a short answer, I, though. All right, Just so why? I'm, I'm, I'm saying good does it do? the sh short answer to almost every specific painful situation is I don't know. I don't know who's God's working on. I don't, maybe he's. Does it he's, make sense uh, to you, Lewis? All right. Well, hold on. Hold on. You said you so, don't know. And I'm asking the next question. Right. Does it make so, sense to you, Lewis? So I would say, I would say this, the, the practice as a whole makes sense to me because I personally experienced it. So I don't know about you, but have you ever been through something you wouldn't wish on your worst Absolutely. possible enemy that you are glad? I, I think for there's later. a lot of people that have been through things they right. wouldn't wish upon their worst enemy. Absolutely, right. Lewis. But oh, yeah, have yeah. any of those situations are you now grateful for? No, not even remotely. I, I have. Why would you be grateful I have for bad things, horrible so, things that happened so to you, Lewis? I'll, I'll tell you. I'll give you an example. So oh, I don't. almost please died. Don't. I was in the hospital, suffered horribly, and if you tomorrow could ask me to go back and change that. There's no way in the world I would change that. I'm glad for Good that for you, experience. Lewis. I feel I'm sure like, there's lots of kids like out I... there that would love to change the fact they were raped in church. Sure. Yeah. And, and I, I, I can't, I think Lewis. as Christians, as Christians, we're called to care for those people, prevent that abuse. We're called to serve those people. We're called to help those people. We're called to bring them therapy and counseling. Christians are giant in the counseling world. We're trying to help people. But with that being said, Ugh, God man. sometimes Where were they? allows evil. Where were they? Where was, Yah where was Yahweh when it was happening? God, I hate this topic. Where was, where was Yahweh where was when Yah it was happening? Where was Yahweh when the cross was happening? You know, where I, was Yahweh dude, when- Dude, no, so, uh, no. You're not going to transfer this to the fucking cross. I'm sorry, dude. You're, you're, you're really pushing all my nerves. I apologize. You're not going to push this to the cross. I don't care about Jesus suffering on the cross. I am talking about a very specific thing happening. Where was Yahweh when that was happening? So what all, all I'm saying is that God has the ability, and C.S. Lewis uses this phrase. He, he has says the ability, he yet take, he refuses to save kids being raped in church. Why? He has, he um, has the ability really. to reverse hell, go back in time and reverse hell, and he's done it in my life. So Let's change done, this topic. Right? Let's so, change this topic. We're done. But no. hold on. Let me, fin let me finish this really. point, though. He has the ability to, to redeem horrible things that happen. Ooh. I've seen it in my life. Most Man. people have seen it. I'm surprised you haven't but he has the ability to redeem stuff. Now there's worse evils than I went through like rape or whatever, that it's hard for me to understand how we could reverse it. But I understand the principle of reversing things. And I know that that's real. And I've seen oh. it in my own life. So yeah. I, I don't doubt that somehow God can go and reverse that for everybody on earth. And no, I think I'm that done. that's I'm a done, great Lewis. promise. I'm done. That's a great promise that I'm I would done. offer we're to done. anybody. We're we're going to talk, we're going to change the subject or I'm done. I, I can't, man. It's really, okay. it's really just getting to me. Right. Okay. Um, I, I apologize if I've lost it, but it just, it's really, it's um, Satan. <laughs> where, where do you think Satan comes from and why is he here? Um, I believe that Satan is a fallen angel. I believe that Satan. Where do you get this um, idea that Satan's a fallen angel? 
I get that um, from Jesus, where he says, I saw Satan fall from the heaven. Um, Jesus and, is quoting uh, the Old Testament, correct? Um, I believe yes. so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And do you know the verses he's quoting when he says that? Um, hold on, I'll tell you. Well, I can tell you right now. It's Isaiah, Isaiah 14. It's one of the verses he's quoting, and he's talking about the king of Babylon. And the king of Babylon... So, yeah. Uh, 14 verse 4 you will take up this taunt against the king of babylon so right there who is he talking about the king of babylon king of babylon yeah. yeah so how the oppressor has come to an end the realm of the dead will stir to meet you at your coming all your oh man see now what in the world my thing all just screwed up but anyways all that stuff comes from the old testament it's talking about different kings different places um You've got the king of Babylon, the king of Tyre and Ezekiel 28. Mm -hmm. uh, these, are, these are earthly people that were given divine attributes for some reason. Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. you know, kings back in the day had divine attributes. Mm -hmm. People thought they were gods. Mm -hmm. So we've got these kings of Tyre, kings of Babylon, and these things were written about them. Now, Jesus, or the author of the, old, of the New Testament, or that specific verse luke has luke. taken yeah. thank you luke has taken that and um attributed it to satan which is really weird and so have you because jesus said it and when mm. you read these verses I'm, I'm very curious where where do you get satan from ezekiel 28 and then isaiah 14 um both of those describe two different kings and the one's a city city of tyre as well um, so one of the things that's true throughout the New Testament, and one of the things that's true throughout Jesus' teaching, and I think true um, just in principle, the way we do it, I, I'll give you an example um, uh, from my, well, let me start with the what I'm talking about. One yeah. of the things that's true is they often will see parallels in the Old Testament to what their personal experience, Old Testament to what they're going through at the moment. And mm -hmm. the Old Testament passage is not necessarily a prediction of what they're talking about. And the, um, but they'll still say, according to the scriptures and Jesus talks about, I think we talked about this last time. I can't remember, mm -hmm. but in Luke 24, um, all scriptures point to him. Well, he's, he's saying that his life reflects those scriptures. It's not necessarily any particular scripture refers to any particular event in his life, but his the whole reflects the scriptures that all scriptures point to him. And in the same way, I would say Jesus often cites the Old Testament um, in reflection of his own experience, his own life. So I think um, in, you know, for a, a great example is, is, I think we talked about this last time, is that out of Exodus, I have called my child. And in the Old mm -hmm. Testament, it's talking about Israel. In the New Testament, it's talking about Jesus. We're talking about um, Satan, though. Let's try to stay but, on Satan here. Let's, well, let's I think the, princi the, the principle is the same. So, I, so I think that, um, so I, I think Jesus is reflecting on what he's seen his own experiences with Satan. And um, he is drawing parallels to old Testament passages. So I, I don't have a problem with that. I, I don't so, see why anybody would have a problem with that. I think that's as like, that's something a huge that's problem because it doesn't say not Satan really, no, anywhere. It's, it's not one word. Well, it's, so and the, they're very, very well, clearly Jesus's own words say it. Yeah. Jesus, his own words say it though. Right. So and and Luke doesn't mean anything when you look at the original and the original doesn't say Satan. So Jesus is is making shit up at that point. He's he's a, he's or, attributing these these verses that are clearly one hundred percent beyond clearly talking about earthly kings, and he's taking again, them out of context to I, to, to mean I, Satan. I don't, I don't think that is fair or true. I think hundred percent fair and true. Often, I'll give you an example that I was going to start off with. That go ahead, go ahead. Makes sense. Go ahead. So um. I um, am. Part, this is a weird thing. I might lose all your audience here because it's not something. I think that normally Christians, I it's probably just me and you at this point. <laughs> normally Christians uh, hold up to, but um, I'm kind of anti-corporation, right? So I, like I'm, I'm generally for free markets, but I'm anti-corporation. It's a weird mm. thing. It's in my book. I got a chapter. Um, but yes. um, so I wrote, um, but I'm also anti-communism. So I wrote a uh, quote on my Twitter the other day that said um, something along the lines of mankind will never be free until the last communist is strangled by the entrails of the last corporate executive, Damn. which sounds like a crazy quote, 
but I was quoting Diderot, less Dennis Diderot quoted of the French Revolution. Hmm. He, um, his quote was, mankind will never be free until the last king is strangled by the entrails of the last priest. Hmm. Um, and so I was, I was just making a joke, hmm. but re- using that old, that quote from him where he kind of pointed to the two, what he saw as the two biggest restrictions on freedom, which were so the Jesus church. So Jesus is just joking that. here. So, he's just... Taking, no, but I'm he knows he's very, taken out of the context. It's, it's fairly common for us to take. Um, Does Jesus know he's taking it out of context? I th- I think he certainly knows he's quoting scripture and referencing something from his own experience. So I, so, I think so. Yes, that, like I like I said in my own. Well, you're out of context is necessarily a hostile statement, and no. I just I just he took like it, I, why is that hostile? So when when I rhyme with something in the old Testament, but uh-huh. talk about my own experiences, that's not, there's nothing it's not hostile. It's just uh, a corrective thing. It's just, you're taking it out of context. Let's fix it. Um, Let's not. I don't I, think it's hostile. I, just, I, just, I disagree. Like you reference, I reference literature a lot of times in my own speech. It, you know, when you read a lot and you reference that stuff, it's not taking it out of context to use it in a different context for, to make a different point. Jesus never says here is a perfect <laughs> exposition of an old Testament passage. Instead, Actually, he's the, talking about his experience with Satan using a similar phrase to the old Testament. I don't think there's any, I don't see why that's a problem. Huge problem. So why do you think uh, Satan fell from heaven? What, what, what did he do? So I, I think, um, we don't have a ton of detail on what he did or why he did it. We see mm. him at a number of times in the, in both the old Testament and the new Testament. And he's often referenced as an accuser, as a tempter instigator. Um, and instigator. Yeah. Wow. So I, I feel um, that he, um, I mean, you see him in the beginning of the book of Genesis as the serpent and you see him um offering no, you don't see him as the, the serpent actually uh, not one spot offering, does it say the serpent is satan yeah i've heard atheists say that i i do have I you read genesis i have yeah did I, you see the I, word I, satan in there i did you see the word satan in there yeah i i think throughout no jewish you did tradition throughout jewish tradition and christian tradition no jewish Jew, satan, jews didn't so, believe in satan um uh, no that's not true but um uh, mm, yeah that's debatable i i Mm. they definitely <laughs> did in the first century they did Wait, they believed I mean, in a different yeah. thing not just say it wasn't satan it wasn't no satan, that's not christianized yeah, yeah, so. christians took satan and made him the kind of their own little um, there definitely in the guy. first century there was a strong strong belief in a, a satan figure well, that's um, debatable what but, can we get um, into that it's a whole history thing and um, but but my my point is so you asked yeah. about who satan is and my point is the theme throughout scripture is that he is someone that uh, encourages other people to set themselves up as God or set him up as God. And what I about think Job that, when, he, when he tempts God? You mean when he tempts Job? Or? God, when he tempts God, he says, hey, have you, have you noticed that guy? You think he'll be good to you, even if I do things to him? Yeah, he's accusing Job in front of God. No, 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 yeah. he's challenging God at that point. He's challenging God to let me do whatever I want to this guy and see if he still worships you he's he's, challenging an all-knowing god which is one of my favorite things there mm -hmm. Uh, he's He's, all-knowing yahweh already knows job's heart he doesn't need to kill his kids but god's like yeah go ahead satan or uh, you know um god often allows us to be tested and i think that's what's going on in job is just in the free will in that man to allow us to be tested i mean where's the free will in that do you think there's free will in that? Like, I mean, we, you, as no. an atheist, you know, we go through experiences that we can't control. So do you, do right. You think, I'm not, it's not a God allowing what, these things to happen. A God that, yeah, releases but what you, his, God that releases his protection from you. That's different. Yeah, but I mean, do you think we allows his will? bad guy? Hey, Let me ask ahead. you this go as ahead. an atheist. Do you believe we what have you free want will? with him? Do you believe we have free will? We already discussed this. It's a difficult topic because of McDonald's. You know, do I really have free will? I mean, mm, it's tip. It's I don't believe in invisible things, so I don't think these invisible things are causing free will or not having free will. It's weird how, to me. How is free will possible with atheism? I just told you, man. I don't know. Yeah, I but if know. if everything has a natural cause, if there's no supernatural action in our brain, how can we possibly have something that's not explained by a chemical reaction? So, in other words, determined. 
That's why most atheists are are determinists, right? Determinist, yeah, no, dude. Only that's all philosophy. That's too deep for me. As far as I go, I don't know if I have free will because McDonald's sends me a bunch of advertisements, so I probably don't even have free will. I'm controlled by the 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 companies and the the the, the corporations around me. So there, no, I don't have free will. The corporations control it. So if you don't believe we have free will, why? Why is any sort of conversation important? Why is a debate like this important if everyone's predetermined? Because I like to understand things. I like to understand everybody's point of view. I like to understand why Lewis believes what he believes. Because but to if me, you don't, it doesn't if you don't make any have free sense will, at all. But if you don't have free will, your level of understanding was predetermined long ago. So you trying to so do you, anything Again, you're going too deep into problem. philosophy. My philosophy ends at McDonald's. So you can go there. Satan, why does Satan exist? Why is he here? Why does Yahweh? Okay, sorry, we went, we went to the heaven thing. I wanted to touch on that. The free will in heaven. Satan was allowed to get kicked out of heaven for doing something. We can agree on that, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so he was allowed to be kicked out of heaven, which means there's free will in heaven. Mm -hmm. How is heaven a perfect place if we all still have free will? Well, first of all, uh, I believe, and this is a scriptural statement but i don't believe heaven is another place i think heaven is the realm of god as a different that's described as a different dimension okay cool um, this that's, other that's dimension heaven right. um heaven what so, do you want to call it it's heaven so i would say it's the the place of god so cool. the dimension Can't, of god is right. there free will in the place of god um i i think that clearly whatever circumstance god put the angels in in that pre adamic uh pre-creation fall that the angels had i think clearly had some sort of freedom but now uh, there's not freedom in heaven him. now we don't have freedom in heaven when we get there um i don't think human beings who are um, made in the image of god are the same thing as angels and i don't think their level of freedom versus our level of freedom so I angels get free will but people don't us. I'm talking um, in believe, the heavenly realm, wherever this place is at, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. I, I really don't care what you want to call it. Just is there free will there? Yeah. I believe that God does something to us in the resurrection that makes us, I don't think it takes That's away our forceful. freedom. I, I don't think it takes away our freedom, but I do think it perfects us so that our wow. choice, our choices are always freely good. So he changes say. you. So he, he, he changes your mind and your way of thinking. Yeah. That your choices yeah. are always good. You don't want to mm -hmm. go see R-rated movies anymore. Yeah, I, I, I mean, if our oh, movie is, is sinful or whatever, but he t he takes out those bad parts of us. I mean, you wow. admit all, all so of us like, have bad parts, right? And you like admit watching Jesus TV all day. Um, Holy cow, man. Could you no, watch Jesus TV all day long? Yeah, I don't. Do you like violent I mean, movies? Do you like action movies? Do you like, you know, disaster movies? Do you like any of those things? Yahweh doesn't. Um, I don't agree that good is always boring. I don't. I don't. I think there's okay, good so what, stuff. What are you going to do um, in heaven? What, what goes on in there? Do you praise and worship all day long? Do you play um, evil? I think you can. I, I believe in a literal resurrection. So I, I believe the end of the Bible says that every grave will be opened and we will literally be given new flesh and new bones. So you um, don't go to heaven right away. completely. Um, I don't believe I, I believe that what we call heaven is actually the resurrection. So I, I think we will be on a new. So where do you go new, when you die? New. Um, earth will be remade is what the Bible no, says. When you're so. dead. Before that happens. Okay. So as yeah. soon as Lewis dies, the earth is going to be remade and it's going to magically be Jerusalem, this new fancy golden Jerusalem with giant gates that nobody can get in or out of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, the description that the Bible uses is um, something called par par paradise. Streets so, of gold. Um, like the, um, I don't like gold, man. No. Do you like gold? So, so the, the Bible actually has a two-phase um, post-mortem existence. The first is something called paradise. Um, and I'll... It, both atheists and Christians confuse this a lot, but I'll just tell you what the Bible teaches and what ancient Judaism teaches um, is that you're, there's a, a period of time when you're separate from the body. Um, and, and the best description I've heard is from N.T. Wright when he says we, we die and our software gets uploaded on God's hardware. And then at the re final resurrection, our software gets put back onto our own hardware that's been remade. So you're just floating um, around waiting. Is it it's like a limit? Yeah, yeah, we're basically waiting. Yeah, there's oh. a wait. There's a wait between a and, waiting and the Bible references Take that. A number. Yeah. yeah. So you the book, book more of waiting. This guy loves of Re waiting. Yeah. Book of Revelation talks about uh, this <clears throat> the saints awaiting the resurrection, waiting for justice to be poured out. So 
Yeah. Um, and then Why? at the final resurrection, we, uh, because the best state is a embodied state. God is a creator. So is he- God, he wants us to be uh, embodied with, um, with uh, both soul and physical mixed together. That's a in lot this, of weird uh, stuff there, Lewis. Thing. That's a lot of weird stuff. I think it's beautiful. I like an idea of a God that um, cares like about the, the physical. like the idea of God. Um, I believe God's real, but I also like his ideas. I like the, the I principles don't. in the Bible that are laid out. Ooh. I think they're beautiful. Yeah. Oh, dude. Where do you, okay, you know, point me to this beautifulness. Where, where's the beautifulness? Because I'm just going to turn to a random page here, and it's not going to be beautiful. Oh, look, we're sacrificing things. Oh, look, we're killing people. Oh, when a woman has her regular flow of blood, I don't know what's icky. So she has to, you know, go away for seven days and everything she touches is icky. Oh, if a we, priest's daughter defiles herself by becoming a prostitute, she disgraces her father and must be burned by fire. Um, we can talk about each, each one of those specifically. If, I, okay, let's talk if you about, want to talk about each one. That's uh, um, Leviticus 21, right, nine. Why are we yeah. burning prostitutes? Because they disgraced what, what, her father. What verse? Leviticus 21, 9, Leviticus 21, 9. Okay. I'm just pulling it up here. So actually, you know what? Let's take a break for a second. I'm going to, I'm going to go reset myself and we're going to come back to 21, 9. Let's let's give me five minutes. All right. Sounds good. You got it. Yep. I'll be back. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. So we're, we're back. We're just going to okay. go ahead right now. <laughs> um, Leviticus 21, nine. Hmm. Why is yeah. that in there? And can you please explain this to me? Sure. Yeah. So um, the old Testament, and if you can give me 30 seconds here. So the old Testament has, has um, some extremely strict laws um, that fall into three general categories. One are laws relating to um, how you enforce crimes slash sins and those are often followed by the death penalty in this case this is a death penalty Mm -hmm. situation right so extremely right extremely (laughs) strict rules and laws given to the people of israel um and then another category is laws i think we talked about this last time laws relating to the temple cleanliness laws that kind of stuff and then the third category is moral laws like things you know ten commandments what ultimately is good and what's bad. So in this case, the moral law would be prostitution's bad. The civil law would be if you if someone commits that crime, the, the punishment is is death, right? So um, the what Christians have done, and you see this in the New Testament, is that the moral law is something that we say we this still applies to Christians. That's why kids memorize the Ten Commandments. That's why we follow the sexual laws of the Old Testament. Um, but the civil laws, we would say, are those were given specifically to Israel for a specific time to make a specific point, and those aren't to be carried forward. And we see that with Jesus, right? So with Jesus, he comes across the adulterer, and the, the Old Testament law would have been to kill her. Um, mm-hmm. They're getting ready to kill her. He protects her from, from that death. And in the same way, he hangs out with prostitutes and he you know, is, is loving to the sinners and caring for the people that are in those situations. So Jesus is in many ways saying, okay, this Old Testament law that had a point, which similar to what I talked about last time you and I were together was the point of the Old Testament is speaking to this holiness of God, speaking to the evilness of sin um, and how horrific it is. And, and unchecked sin can lead to much more than death you know it can lead to just complete destruction of your soul so the old testament laws are intended to teach that lesson and then jesus says okay we're not going to um as as the followers of jesus as a christian we're not going to enforce those civil laws anymore but the moral is still true prostitution is horrible you shouldn't do it it leads to your destruction leads to the destruction of other people i think it's perfectly fine i mean selling is legal fucking is legal why isn't selling fucking legal it's weird. I mean, if, if it's free will at that point, if it's not forced, if it's not, I mean, who am that's, I to, that's a, I, to, I would say to that's judge a very, how somebody um, makes a living? I, th- I think that's a very um, anti-body uh, philosophy. I think the anti-body? idea that- body Explain that. Yeah. 
Um, the idea that what we do with our bodies sexually is doesn't affect our soul. Um, our, okay, yeah, no, 100%. It doesn't affect our soul. I don't believe in a soul. So right there, there's your, there's your problem. Yeah. Yeah. So I, and I, and I, I think, I think the idea that sex is just like any other physical action, I think is, is something that most people don't actually believe. I mean, most people, you've actually said it here, like rape is worse than abuse, right? So we're physical. Let's not go back, there. Let's abuse, not go back there. Right? Yeah. But, but my point is, is that we, we <sighs> view certain, certain things sexually as affecting our soul, even when we don't believe in a soul, right? Like we think, I don't it think is, it's affecting a soul. Oh. I already established that. Yeah, I well, I uh, what I'm saying is, I think most of us view sex as something beyond just a um, a physical interaction. Brushing someone's arm is different than grabbing their genitals, right? Like there's yeah. two different things, right? But why is it different? Like if it's just a physical action, it shouldn't be different, but it is different. Like Christians view it as different. Why do you view <laughs> like what's what's the difference? It's in your percent different, man. Sex and elbow rubbing. I mean, come on, there's a big difference there. Obviously. Well, we, but what, what let's get let's, we're getting why? off track we're getting off track okay. why is that a good thing to have in the bible why is it a good thing to to have what was it uh, oh sorry uh leviticus 21 9 if a priest's daughter this is my favorite part if a priest's daughter defiles herself by becoming a prostitute she disgraces her father she must be burned with fire she disgraced her father oh the poor dude now she has to burn with fire, dude. No. Yeah. Like I said, I because mean, because the father feels disgraced because he's a priest. I'm a priest. How dare you? This is the worst thing that could possibly happen to me here. I'm going to send you on fire. Oh, I don't know. I turned into a pirate all of a sudden, but you know, <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? No, I do. I do think that the, there's a consistency and, and um, in the old Testament of strict punishments for for Correct. sins yeah right? so definitely like, I, strict punishments I, I think this is one of those do you think so it's I, a good like, thing though uh, that's what i'm asking do you think it's a good uh, thing because uh, the bible clearly states the law is holy perfect I, and righteous yeah and all that I, I think it clearly had a good purpose at Ooh. the moment i i don't think it would be good for us to live that out today why as um, why would it be a good thing to burn a prostitute lewis um i think think that god was making a very clear statement number one we don't know how often this actually happened and maybe never happened it um, happened but, uh, once that's all it needs to that's all i need to worry about if it happened once if one priest's daughter who decided to be a prostitute of her own god. free will got burned at the stake i have a problem with that and so should you right but yeah. jesus finds all of this perfect and holy and righteous and good yeah and i i think i don't the idea of a old testament law that points to how big of a deal sin is and how it's incredibly destructive to yourself to your community to your family to those around you um i i think that's graceful that, it's that, disgraceful to her father that's how it hurt him so she did she needs to be burned by the stake because she disgraced her father do you think disgracing one's parents deserves a punishment by like that um, I think disgracing one's parents certainly causes damage to one's parents. Cool. I think it causes if, damage if it your... can cause damage. Yeah. Disgracing one's parents, hurting their feelings can definitely cause damage in, re in relationship issues. But do you think that they deserve to be burned because of that? Alive, burned um, alive, like, like a whole thing, so, just like on the stove. So, We're talking so again, your whole I, fucking body. I think the beauty of what Jesus did was he spent time with prostitutes. Don't talk he, about Jesus. He, We're talking about this uh, law here. We're well, talking about this I law think what Yahweh they're... thinks. This is Yahweh. Yeah, Yahweh but you're asking Jesus me as a and... you're asking me as a Christian, and I can't understand one and without the other. So they go together in my mind, and the two go together in this way is that in the Old Testament it points to the necessary damage that's done with sin, and the damage that is comes from sin is actually worse than, worse than death. Right? It's worse. In this, in this. Um, Why is it worse than death? Why is damaging um, done by sin worse than death? If, if, if I have a problem with my family and we're, cause I'm, a, I decided to be a prostitute. My family disowned me. I damaged the family. Okay. So whose fault is it? Is it, is it me? Sorry for becoming a prostitute or is it my family unable to accept the fact that I became a prostitute? Um, I think that we all ultimately all sins lead to a damage to our soul which is way worse Ugh, than and i don't believe in body. any of that crap so that's where we that's where we they part part ways there is, is you believe it damages an invisible thing that lives inside of us 
mm-hmm. and I don't. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean, so it's okay for it to be burned, burned alive. Is that what you're saying? It's okay for back then. It was perfectly fine for them to burn prostitutes. I think the law had a very good purpose. And, I, and the purpose uh, is burning prostitutes. Do you think that's a good purpose? Although I would say the purpose is ultimately to teach ancient Holy Israel crap, as Lewis. well as us. This, this lady burned to death because she was a prostitute. Do you think it was a good thing or not? Um, like I said, I believe that. Yes or no. I believe that ultimately God has complete control over every life. Like he. He doesn't and, have complete control. Satan um, runs things right now, doesn't he? No, Isn't Satan has, running this world. No, remember Job. He Satan had to ask permission for what he did. So Satan is not running this world. He didn't ask permission. Oh. He challenged God. It yeah, was a God, challenge. It wasn't. Hey, by the way, can I can I muck with this guy? Can, yeah, I, God, can I muck with his life? Can I kill his kids? Yeah, no, he yeah, didn't God, ask him. He just said, God, "Hey, I'm going to make a bet with you. I bet yeah, you this guy, if God I kill his kids no. and yeah. do all these bad things to him, I bet you he'll still love you." How God horrible is that? No, but, yes. Yeah. Yahweh could have said no. Yahweh could have said, hey, guess what? I already know what this guy believes. I already know this guy loves me. And I'm thinking right now in the future, I'm using my my, my time stuff, my Dr. Strange time stone here. And I already know what's going to happen. So I don't need you to challenge him. I went in the future and found out. Or I read his mind because I can read his mind. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that have been like more accurate and more more accurate to your loving God, your all-knowing God, as opposed to, hey, let's go. Go ahead kill his kids see what happens yeah Which i mean part it seems more loving we're, to you. we're getting back to the whole um we're getting back to a lot of things. purpose of evil and that kind of stuff which i i think there god certainly had a good purpose in job's life and certainly Gross. i don't um i do don't not think agree. Do not yeah agree. i i do think he had a good purpose in his life and so if god came I, along I'll say, let's go this lewis if god came along god knows that lewis loves him god knows lewis will love him no matter what happens but God decides to let Satan ruin your life and kill your kids. Just to test you, just to see if you really do love him. Mm-hmm. Would you think that's a good thing? Um, I think that it would be the most horrific thing that I could possibly go through. I think it was the most horrific thing that Job could possibly have pointlessly gone through. go through. Um, pointlessly but go here, through. Here's, Don't need Michael, to go through. Here's what, it, all right, here's my honest belief is go that ahead. ultimately all of my kids their lives are in the hands of God. And That's scary. ultimately he, he, he could take them tomorrow. He could take them in 50 take years. Where? I pray. I pr- purgatory. I pray. No, they they're floating die. around yeah, the so. purgatory. They don't go to heaven. Remember we, we talked about this. Uh, you, you believe in not purgatory. Pur- not purgatory. It's, waits till the it's end. paradise, but uh, yeah. So um, just floating around, I, just waiting. Right. So ultimately I, Michael, I really do believe that God holds my children in his hands and I pray that he does not take them before I die. Right. Like if he asks you to set them on fire, would you do uh, it? Um, I definitely, if if one of your kids became a prostitute, I, yeah. Would you set them on fire? The the Bible, the Bible very clearly says not to do that. So where does it say uh, not to set your children on fire? Um, where multiple times throughout where? the bible i'll give you please some tell examples. me what's um, where it says please don't set your children on fire we just read yeah, leviticus yeah. 21 9 where it says to set your children on fire um no that wasn't a child remember that's an adult daughter no nowhere does it say adult it says daughter Hold and that's your children so i don't care how um, old they are they're still your children mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um in the fire hold on i'll find this first shadrach meshach and abendigo why did he save them and not all the Jews, his favorite people? That's another great question. Why save Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the fiery furnace? But, you know, yeah, his favorite yeah. people, his favorite people, mm-hmm. Man, he let I them hate... go like lambs to the slaughter. No big deal. He didn't even stop it. Didn't stop it. Didn't step in. Did he send them good feelings before they burned? Who is that? And the Jews in the gas chambers, did you, did you send them good feelings? Um, I don't know what he yeah, did with any specific his person. His favorite people, the man. Scene. These are his favorite people. They yeah. don't just get slaughtered. Yeah, yeah. He was, he was um, just sat back and watched it happen. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Four great so, questions. Go ahead. 
this fire pass through. Sorry, I am searching. Do, no, you're good. Uh, you're good. It sh- I mean, it shouldn't be uh, that hard. Do not well, set children on fire. I mean, I'm, Jesus uh, says, do not set children <laughs> no, on it, fire. It, de- it definitely has multiple verses about uh, not allowing your children to pass fire through the fire and um, God not uh, permitting that. It's actually a very consistent theme in the yeah, Bible. Just drowning See, them is one thing, but no, setting but, them on fire, um, you know, it's a whole other topic. Hu- human sacrifice was very common in the ancient world. And one of the major themes in the Old Testament Bible is that God, Yahweh, did not allow human sacrifice. So lies, man, man lies. Uh, have you said, heard of Jephthah? You heard the story of Jephthah? I absolutely have. Yeah, I've okay, so then wrote, I wrote, you're, wrote an article you're, on Jephthah. Your assumption um, is incorrect. Um, can you point in the story of Jephthah, God commanding that? I didn't say God commanded it. He allowed it to happen. Did he not? Well, he, in the same sense, he allows every evil to happen in this world, but he didn't. It was sacrificed to that. him yeah. specifically and then canonized in his book. He allowed it to happen and be associated with his own name. Yeah, but I he think he gave it's, the man uh, victory uh, over his 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 enemies. No, you have to be you have to be very careful when no. reading the Old Testament text um, mm. that um, the writers write. And I had a Bible teacher that told me this. Um, and I found it extremely interesting. If you've ever read, you, like Ernest Hemingway, you ever read mm. Ernest Hemingway? Um, Ernest it's Hemingway. To get through. Uh, I love Ernest Hemingway. Like Good. fantastic. I don't know. Like my, one of my I favorite authors. With that but, guy. <laughs> um, so, but Ernest Hemingway has one of the things that Ernest Hemingway used to say is beware of adjectives. Um, and what Ernest Hemingway often would have is this extremely stripped down language. And so he would say things like, and this is not a quote from Hemingway, but just for example, he would be like, I went to her house. I didn't know why I went to her house. I, sh- I should have gone back or whatever. And the reader is expected in that to understand that Ernest Hemingway was saying that he actually loved that girl. Or he was interested in that girl. He wanted to spend time with her. Um, and you, you kind of like Ernest Hemingway would strip everything down. And the re- it was up to the reader to kind of understand, is that good? Is that bad? Is What's the full meaning there? And the, the um, professor that I... I um, gave this reference. He said the Old Testament Hebrews very similar in that they have an extremely stripped down prose where they'll say so and so did this, and it's really up to the reader to understand it was that good or bad, is that right, wrong, and it's it's there's there, very rarely sometimes it does, but very rarely does it say this person did this and that was good, or this person did that and that was bad often it just says this person did that and the knowledge that the reader has either from his teachers or through other texts in the bible the reader then is able to kind of understand oh he shouldn't have done that and in the case of jephthah um i i wrote a whole article on this i sincerely believe that the whole point of the text is that he made a rash vow that he should not have made and was a reckless dangerous vow where does um, it say it's a reckless well, dangerous the whole, vow. whole point i was just saying is that the text doesn't actually tell you right. one way or it the doesn't. other whether it was good or bad it right doesn't. so it's hemingway style so but it's in you, there right but you can't conclude it was a good thing because it's in there lots lots of biblical characters all good do things are in the things. bible right um lots of whatever biblical... yahweh does and allows is good right no no, lots no of... whatever yahweh does and allows is not well, good yahweh didn't sacrifice her yahweh allowed the sacrifice to happen to him he, he also al- gave the man victory over his enemies. Right. And right after he made that deal with Yahweh that said, I'm going to sacrifice the first thing that comes out of the door. And he used yeah. his time sure. stone and knew but, exactly what was going to happen. So he right. knew it was going to happen. That vow was the reckless vow. And so where does what, it say it was a reckless uh, vow, though? Um, it doesn't. You have to read and add that to it. Yeah, but you're adding that it wasn't a reckless vow. You're adding we're both adding a moral judgment. Wait, no, to I'm re- it is decision. definitely a reckless um, vow, obviously. I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't. I'm saying it was, but Yahweh never says it was. I'm saying it was because I don't think that you should kill your kids. It's amazing. Um, so, in, so in Leviticus chapter 18, Ugh, verse but Yahweh's like, I'm going to do the says, most loving thing says, ever and send not, you my kid. I'm going to yeah. kill him. So in Leviticus chapter 18, verse 21, it says, do not give any of your children to be sacrificed to Molech. For to Molech. You must, but to you me, must not, hey, you know, whatever. Um, Nope. Uh, so other places, he mm. says, do not allow yourself, for example, um, do not allow yourself. Uh, so 
um, to sacrifice in the, you shall not, oh crap. Where's it at? Where's it at? What'd you get? I love this. Let's go. I hate having to search for stuff on the fly like this, but okay. So Deuteronomy chapter 18, 10, okay. there shall not be found among you anyone that makes his daughter or son pass through the fire. Well, then what the hell is Leviticus talking about in 21.9 where he obviously lets his daughter pass through fire on purpose because he, she disgraced him. She um, hurt his feelings. Oh, that's an his example. Of, that's just the death penalty. I mean, God definitely doesn't prohibit the death penalty. And it's the it, then whatever you just said was, was pointless because we obviously had it. No, in the... In and the, then we had it in Jephthah. So Jephthah is a case of human sacrifice, which the Bible do not set your children on against. fire. Where does right. it say do so, not set your children on fire? Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18. 10, Read that again. Says, um, there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or daughter pass through the fire. Pass through fire. Does it say do not set your children on fire? They're passing through saying. fire. I don't, it, does, it could be interpreted no, in so many different ways, man. Not really. No, that's, that's clearly what that's saying. That's, clearly they're passing yeah. through fire, which means once you pass through it, you're okay, right? You pass through it. You walk through the coals. You no. jumped over the flames. You it's, pass through it. I didn't sit there and be burned. Not, there's no, I don't know. Bible scholar on the planet. Oh, that, you know, I, I, or, uh, that, I don't really that care about Bible scholars. Yeah. Honestly, that's, that's, well, I'm, so just, much I'm just telling you, that's a reference to Old Testament human sacrifice. Are these where, um, and actually, there's counter examples where bad people, like for example, um, I think uh, Asa, um, the king, allowed his, you know, sacrificed his children in the fire, and the Bible says. Um, which God never commanded and and did not. He want did in Leviticus twenty one nine. He did. Um. First of all, you keep saying children. That's not doesn't say children. I can look up the Hebrew word. Daughter. If you, want, if, but, uh, if you have a daughter, is that your child? Um. I would yes. say it's offspring, Holy but nobody's cow, saying that. Lewis. A, a you just don't want to yeah. admit it. You just don't like that. You don't like that um, word. Well, I I think it's the same that thing is, though. Do you know that my offspring or my adult, children? Yeah. Did you know that? saying offspring did you know I mean, that though i mean it's that's what they yeah, are saying as a child uh, makes it that's an emotional thing yeah you don't um, like that yeah. you don't like that no of course not hosea well, nine yeah. hosea nine let's go there with, with more children okay yeah um, yeah what yeah, does yahweh do with those kids Nine sixteen. i will slaughter your cherished what is it Nine children. Nine sixteen. I will slaughter your cherished children. Why? Because they're worshiping a different deity. Oh um, no! So, yeah. So <laughs> if you look at if you look at um, the what Hosea is is a, is a prophetic warning to Israel. The, um, so this didn't happen. The people of Ephraim they didn't lose their children. He didn't slaughter their cherished offspring. Is that what you're telling me? He just threatened them. Oh, ch Children are often killed in war, but God isn't commanding anybody to be killed here. He's, oh, for crap's sake. He's not. Don't make yeah, me that's turn not to what Hosea. That that's fine. It's cool. I'll turn to it. That's cool. I got this. <sighs> Children. Hosea 9.16. Go there. Let's, let's go to Hosea 9.16. Oh, dang it. Of course, I only got that little bit. So, you know, play some play some music for me, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think there's a lot of verses in the in the prophets. Hosea 9. Where God says are. things along along those lines that, you know, that your children will be killed or your, uh -huh. your people will be killed. So or Yahweh's you threatening smashed. children. We uh, agree. You agree that Yahweh is threatening children. I think ultimately God takes every life. I, I think there's no life that God doesn't have in his hands. Um, and I think that's his, his right. I think, I think our, out, Lewis. our breath is a loan from him. As the, is he as threatening the, children, Lewis? Um, I think he is threatening judgment in the same. Ah, why are you not, why are you afraid to say he's threatening children? Why can't you say that? Uh, um, I don't, I, I think it would fall in the same category as if, if I was like, Hey, if you, if you drop, you know, if you're a president and I said, hey, if, if you drop nuclear bombs on Russia, they're going to bomb us back and your kill, children will be killed. I think God, when he says, I will do this, he's often talking about the march of history, the consequences of war, the consequences of the Holy actions that they're taking. Wow, Lewis. So I, I it's think, so amazing um, to me how much you avoid it. Let's go to 9-11, Hosea 9-11. And okay. we're just going to read through here. Go ahead. I'll, I'll let you read it. Whatever verse, whatever or, or, uh, uh, flavor you want. Okay, 
Ephraim's glory will fly away like a bird. No birth, no pregnancy, no conception. Mm-hmm. Even if they rear children, I will bereave them of everyone. Stop right there. Well, what, what does that mean to you? Even um, if they have children, he will bereave them. What, what do you think that means to you? I am guessing some sort of disease will spread through their camp or something will. Cause who's causing them it? To- okay. Who's causing this uh, disease to spread through a camp? Um, I I. Think- There's a word I there. Yeah. Who is that I? Yeah. I think that ultimately God is sovereign over everything. And so that's cool. So what is, yeah. who's the I? The I is Yahweh? His providence. Yes. So yep. it's Yahweh. Providentially. Yeah. What, what does that mean providentially? I mean, I, I think that is it or is it him? I, I would say that ultimately every disease that has ever swept through history, you could say ultimately is God's providence that God, God causes every life and God every caused it. There we go. That's all I needed. Thank history. you. Yeah. So even but, if I bear, ch- if you, even if you rare children, God will bereave you of everyone. Mm-hmm. Okay. Continue on. Woe to them. All right. Woe to them. Let's see, which verse are we on here? It's still so, 12. Yeah. 12. Oh, 12. There. No. Okay. Woe to them. When I turn away from them, I have seen Ephraim like Tyre planted Tyre. Mm, in a pleasant guy. place. <laughs> but Ephraim will bring out their children to the slayer. Give them, O oh Lord, what will you give them? Mm-hmm. Give them wombs that miscarry, breasts that are dry. Because- Stop right there. Stop right there. Okay, go ahead. Well, because of the wickedness in Gilead. So give them, O oh Lord. What will you give them? The you is, is Yahweh. What will Yahweh give them? The very next sentence, give them wombs that miscarry and breasts that run dry. So what happens when you give wombs that miscarry and breasts that run dry? You have aborted fetuses, which, you know, according to Christians, no matter what stage it is, it's a, it's a child. And then you've got breasts that run dry, which means he's starving infants to death. All of this is done on purpose. Why? Because of their wickedness in Gilgad, or or how you pronounce that. And what wickedness is that? What was their wickedness? Let's continue on. Okay. So um, So 15. I I, I halted them there because of their sinful deeds. I will drive them out of my house. I will no longer love them. And all their leaders are are rebellious. Ephraim is blighted. Their root is withered. They yield no fruit. Even if they bear children, I will slay their cherished offspring. Right there. My God will reject them because they have not obeyed him. They will be wanderers among the nations. There you go. So what happened in this circumstance? What do you think happened between 9-11 and uh, 17 here? What What do you think happened? So I, I think God is warning the people of Ephraim, and I think he is making a statement that their sin will lead to horrible suffering on their part. So Is he threatening I think, children? Um, um, I think the consequences of violating God's law often do harm children. I think abortion, you brought up abortion. That's a great example. No, 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 that, no. Stop. stop, you know, stop people right is re- he harming children? He, um, the he in this is Yahweh. Is Yahweh harming uh, the kids uh, in this circumstance? Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm trying to answer this question as clearly as I can. I believe he's talking about a future war or disease that will sweep through them. So to the extent that God causes any war, the extent that God causes any sickness, the extent that God providentially guides history, I think clearly um, that he is, but so I he would is. say no, so he's no, causing these things no, to happen. No more than he caused smallpox, no more than he caused. That's horrible. Um, AIDS or anything else like he ultimately why would he cause AIDS ultimately he's providential he's providential over all things so ultimately he oversees all things that take place that doesn't mean getting back to the free will discussion that doesn't mean that um we can't Ephraim couldn't turn back from the consequences of their sin it doesn't mean I will so I understand yeah I will I have I will bereave them I will no longer love them that's another topic Uh, I I will slay their cherished offspring so Yahweh is doing this personally this is a personal attack from Yahweh himself the word I there that that very distinctly you know points to somebody and that's going to be Yahweh right yeah, I mean, I so if, Yahweh if kills a bunch of kids here. 
if your question is, is God sovereign over the lives of children? I, I think he is. Yeah. And it's, it, we see horrible things. No, my question is, that, how uh, is this loving? This is disgusting. You're telling me he's um, this awesome guy. So, yet right here, he so says, I, would I say, will no longer love them. I will say this, Michael. I will say this, Michael. I, I, this, Michael. I think <laughs> both atheists and Christians. Thanks for pushing to, back. And both atheists and Christians have to deal with the fact that kids get killed in war. They die from Atheists disease. don't have to deal with I, it. We don't have a loving God that protects everybody. Right. You but, do. You right. have this loving so, God that protects so everybody, when, yet allows yeah, all, all right. this to happen. Both, of us, observe, this to both happen. of us observe these horrible things happen. Mm. I will say, in my case, to these children, uh, to these families, to the children from smallpox, the children to dying today because of starvation, I would say to them, I will help you as best I can. Yes. And if, oh, hold on. And if I can't help you, God ultimately oh, will raise you up on the last man. day and there is hope <laughs> and there is meaning and there is purpose. And I think the atheist is in this reverse horrible position of I saying, no, you. these people weren't killed by God. They weren't killed by anything. They weren't killed by province. They just died randomly. And now they're gone and now they're dirt and they it was meaningless and pointless. And personally, I think the Christian worldview is way nicer. So like, I don't understand. No. Like, um, so like when I say, I say God has a purpose and ultimately he will resurrect these children. He will resurrect. You asked about the Holocaust. He will resurrect hundred percent of those people. Like there will be a resurrection ultimately of all people from all time, all evil will be reversed. And like I, this idea that, um, as Christians, we have to look at the damage in this world as this permanent thing that can never be redeemed. I think that's only an atheist point of view. I don't no, think Christians I don't, have to I don't do that. believe in re redeeming from an invisible man. I don't think we need to be redeemed. So that's not an atheist thing at all. An atheist thing, the only thing an atheist thing is, you ready for this? The only thing is we don't believe in a God. That's right. the which, only thing that ha, that you can attribute to an atheist, which That's has logical thing. consequences. It has logical consequences. There's no logical not, consequences. Not, to the, a logical consequence a would be a logical consequence would be these don't, kids don't, won't, don't won't be resurrected. They you won't be resurrected. You, you believe in, a, in an afterlife. You can't. And invisible people. You can't talk logic to me. I will well, help you. I want to go back to. I will are you help saying, you. Yeah, but are you saying that there, uh, the logical consequence of not believing in God does not include the fact that God won't resurrect it? Like logically, you I don't can't believe, believe in, the God. in. So right. I so right. So logically, so, you can't believe in the resurrection. I can believe in a resurrection. I can believe. You, ultimately, you can believe in it, but it doesn't make it logical. Even, <laughs> even death. Yeah, but even death can be reversed. So I, no. that's my belief is that even death can be reversed. That's even called a death fairy tale. Permanent. That's called make believe, man. Have you seen anybody come back from the dead? It's happened at least once with Jesus. Have you yes. seen yeah. anybody come um, back from the dead, Lewis? Um, I have not. No, no. Yeah, but I, I believe it will happen. You've yes. heard it like once in a story from ancient times. And you're like, yeah, that's it. That guy. It happened. Um, I think there's good evidence for the resurrection. No, there's no. Yeah, I, believe, I believe it's strong. Dude, strong a evidence. missing tomb yeah. is not good evidence. That could be a million different things. I can go from space aliens to Jewish followers. We talked space there's aliens last exactly. time. It's not, but it's there's not a million different yeah. options, man. Um, there's a million different. But you're like, yeah, resurrection. He rose from the dead. That's so, the one. so the yeah, but, but no, it's we, never we could before. go through. I think again. we only went through space aliens last time. Go but we can go. We can go through the rest of them if you want. I want to go back to. I will help you. I want to yeah. go back to the, I will help you. Lewis, would you help somebody in need? Absolutely. If there was a kid dying from cancer and his parents came to you and said, Lewis, I know you can help. Can you help my child? Yes. Yes. Right. And, that's and I, would, I would do so in your... large part. I would do so in large part because Jesus commanded me. To ah, that's the lamest thing you would do because you can, you are actually here and you have empathy and you love helping people because you know what it benefits you in the long run helping everybody we help each other let's work together let's do all of this if you saw a kid in need you would help if you were able to that's different from your god your god does not he doesn't help he sits there and sends feelings or you know one day it'll be great when we're all in heaven together, well, but you I'll, would stop before we even get to the heaven part. I'll, I'll, I'll say, first of all, like you, you're saying, because God doesn't always help. He does help. He often. Doesn't. Like many, many he people, doesn't. myself included, your God have had never helps anybody. So he, you can't I've prove had, that he does. You can't prove I, that it's I him mean, or my dinosaur deity or Iron Man. You have no clue. Yeah. 
Well, I'll say I, I've, I have prayed to him and gotten very, very, very specific answers. Well, guess what? Others had... have prayed to him and got no answers. I know. That's what I'm getting. So that doesn't point, mean your that, deity yeah, is real. So you're saying because he doesn't always answer. Because he never he answered does, me. He never because answers, he never answered but... the pastor who was praying for his kid dying of cancer. Because he never answered the kid who's being raped at church. He um, never answered. He so, never stopped. He was never right, there. So Lewis. Let me let me just say, I know people who have had kids with cancer that have had those answered cool. prayers. Cool. So I know, one out of and, one million. And, and doesn't I know mean people. He's real, and Lewis. I know people that have had kids with cancer that died that were incredibly grateful. They had a relationship with God and trust him ah, for, for the no, future of their children. No. So. Um, no, I thank you for and, letting me have and I know and I know people, I, cancer, I mean which one of stopped. one of the people in that whole Michigan State horrific abuse scandal um, was that Rachel I, I can't remember her last name it starts with a D but she was a Christian and she said God helped her through that situation so the I idea don't. that God the God the idea that God doesn't help that's, us that when we're going through horrible helpful. things I, I think is is wrong and I think that the atheist answer is actually much more cruel than the Christian answer to all these things. Is that, How is the atheist uh, more? <clears throat> so the atheist answer to the girl that was abused in, or the woman that was abused mm, at Lewis. Michigan State is that mm. it was pointless, meaningless. There was no, absolutely nothing, no, no point to it. 100% um, the rape of children. There's no point to it, Lewis. It's meaningless. We need to stop it. Would you uh, stop it? Would you stop a rape of a child in your own as, home, Lewis? As a as a Christian, you as are a human being, Lewis. As a Christian, you are absolutely as a human to help. being, absolutely. Lewis. So, right. So, as a Christian, you no, are absolutely stop with to the help. Christian crap. Because I'm an atheist, right. and I would stop it. Sure. Yeah. As yeah, a yeah, human so, being, yeah, yeah, Lewis, yeah, you right. would stop it. Yes, as an I would. Yes, God, yes, I would. Back here. But, like, yeah. Mm. Yeah, but I I know we got back to the same topic. It's just, and it's just, it's just I'm sorry. Blows and me like you and I talk We're online is that I'm yeah, I, I do have to go very soon. But um I the 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 truth is when it comes to evil in the world, I sincerely believe that the most helpful analogy is to look at God as a surgeon or a doctor giving chemotherapy that when he tells us not to cut and we as Christians, you as an atheist, everybody, we're called to not cut. We're called to help. We're called to prevent this. No one's but calling me to do anything. Right. Right. But my point is, I haven't is, heard it. Have you so, heard a call? So in, oh. in Matthew, Matthew chapter 25, verse 40, Jesus said, whatever you do, the least people, so kids, slaves, etc., you do unto me. And so as a Christian, I'm called to treat the weakest members of society as I would treat my no, Lord as a Christian, Savior God. You're, you're, so, um, you're called to follow this book. Right, and in this right. book, it tells you to kill witches. It tells you to kill atheists and anybody that's trying to take you away from your God. There's a lot of things in here. Lewis, you're taking just tiny bits of it and the rest of it, you're manipulating and twisting to mean um, all these weird things. Lewis, I, your God stands by while all of this happens, waiting for his final judgment. Waiting, um, your, your, statement, your statement assumes the pointless part. 100% is pointless, Lewis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't believe it's pointless. I believe the evil in the world has a point and I think it will be fixed and I think it will be reversed. And Why? I think the worst Why? damages- Why, Lewis? Uh, why, is he, seen, why not start off in perfection, Lewis? Why not start human beings and the whole planet off in perfection? Why are we not in heaven right away, Lewis? So your question is, why didn't God create a world? Why where, shitty world versus perfect heavenly realm? So you think a world that had um, zero danger, zero That's what heaven risk, is, right? Zero freedom. Lewis, is that zero, what heaven is? So- yeah, but hold, hold yeah, on. Yeah. You think that would be a better world? Why not start us off in that? That had yeah. no risk, no yeah. danger, no trials. Uh -huh. um, you you think no adventure? No, like that would be in your mind. So uh, heaven the best sucks place and earth be. is awesome? Um, well, I think there's a difference between living through an adventure and then resting. No, 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 versus, no, 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 Lewis. Versus, you don't get to do that. You don't um, get to do that. What for, about the kids that go to heaven? They don't get to live their adventure. What about all these kids, kids you always drowned and slaughtered? They don't get their adventure. They don't get their life. Uh, they, they go right to heaven. So why not start us off right. in heaven if it's so great? So I, I I would say that each one of those kids, God can put through whatever experience he oh, wants in, in their resurrected Lewis. life, right? So oh, like, I don't man. Believe... So now they're living adventures in purgatory? Is that what's happening? Yeah, I don't believe in purgatory, but I believe whatever in it's called. Uh, what you... yeah, paradise. Yeah, paradise. So, uh, so but, well, they're um, living 
it's so confusing, Lewis. Yeah, it's. What I mean, it's, it, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I'm, <laughs> you, you've been a great guest. You really have. I really appreciate your. Well, thanks your, for your hanging yeah, in there with thanks me. Thanks for having and, me on. Yes, I. I uh, there's something we just we just. They, mm, I don't know are, what it is. <laughs> these are hard uh, hard topics, and I understand uh, your frustration. We talked offline, and like when we talk about kids being hurt, it just makes me ill as a father. Yeah. Um, but. 100%. Um, yeah, but I really do believe that the Christian message to kids and to families is a wonderful, beautiful message. That's that's the best possible thing. That that's is disgusting, Lewis. Um, that I find is, it disgusting. Prayer is meaningful. Life has a purpose. Prayer is useless. And somehow God will reverse your troubles. Those Life are, is your own a purpose. Beautiful message. That's Invisible a beautiful people message. don't exist. I love rebutting you at the same time. This has been fun. Thank you, Lewis. It's been a blast. Where can we find you before we go? Okay, um, I am on lewisunget.com. Um, and, uh, my Twitter is I am unget at I am unget. Um, if you go to my website, you can download, um, the emperor <laughs> has no clothes, nice which, job is, happening. Uh, <laughs> which is an excellent book that doesn't actually talk that much about religion. It does have a little bit, but it's mostly about cultural questions and economics and all sorts of other things. My view on corporations, if you're interested oh. in that. Um, but, uh, so check that out and, uh, yeah, that's about it. So. Awesome. Thank you, Lewis. Um, it's been it's been interesting. I don't <laughs> I can't say I've had a lot of fun, but honestly, you know, I do appreciate your hanging in there. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. And uh, I last thing I want to do is work you up. But uh, I'm not the wor- I'm not the best at this. So. But you know, I do. Yeah. I you know, I mm, that back and forth with us. We've we've got something. All right, love it. Thank you. We'll talk to you later. All right, <laughs> thanks, man. Right. Bye. We'll talk to you later. the show there is for you today thanks for listening if you like what you heard and want to help keep the recording light on simply go to patreon.com forward slash bsw the podcast and sign up to be a supporter of the show your episodic tithes of a dollar or more will give you access to the patron feed unaired conversations early access to each episode and much more for the latest events bsw swag and a peek behind the scenes head on over to the show's ever evolving web page at the bible says what.com the bible says what the book is out head on over to the bible says what.com and get yourself and your grandma a signed copy thanks to the cosmic powers of the internet it is now possible to buy me a beer or coffee online simply go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash bsw the podcast and click the appropriate buttons if you can't support the show monetarily please like share and or leave a review as always you can find me at the bible says what facebook youtube twitter or instagram pages you can also reach me at bsw the podcast at gmail.com and no matter which platform you use to listen to your podcasts don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on the next episode Until then, would you kindly pick up your Bibles and read them? defendable can set me off. I strive to be a patient person. I struggle with it constantly. I don't know if it's the pressures of life squeezing, 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 squeeze, squeeze it good.